hey, got a minute, I'll teach you. I don't even know how to describe what I'm about to teach you. This is maybe the deepest dive on AI consciousness and how your mind works that I have ever done, so strap in. It's not actually going to be a minute. Let's begin with a book, The Society of Mind, by Marvin Minsky. Much of our conception of what an agent is, as in an AI that can take actions, comes from this book. Frameworks like internal family systems and disorders like dissociative identity disorder are explored thoroughly in some of these pages. But it is also the framework from which all of the self-directing agents are being built. No one knows what consciousness is. People start and end in different places. Some people begin by believing that everything has a mind and others do not. These pages are relevant if you want to dive deeply into how to work with LLMs. In this section, he lays out mindsets. And mindsets are incredibly helpful for working with LLMs, but also for working on your own personal development. The phase of architecture that we have reached with large language models is no longer about the technical. It is now about cognitive architecture, and these are the architectures we must build upon. These elements of cognitive architecture are introduced to young children, and we must now introduce them to machines. People who have been able to construct a functional agent master these types of strange loops that exist in consciousness. Reinforcement learning with human feedback has yielded major gains in capacities of large language models, much like when a parent teaches a child to empathize with others, that child becomes more proficient in emotional intelligence and interpersonal dynamics. In June 2023, GPT-4 was capable of doing theory of mind at the level of a seven-year-old child, who is generally more capable than many animals that we have tested amongst similar tasks. It is generally accepted that the spontaneous emergence of these capabilities points to a larger mechanism at work. In Minsk's book, he discusses self-reflection as a continuous process that keeps us going and keeps us basically triggering ourselves into the next state of action. Resurfacing and resummarizing memories is another common task that we engage in. This is in the consciousness model for people. In this paper, we discuss personas. Prompting a large language model to take on a persona can sometimes improve its performance, but it can also sometimes worsen its performance. When you're at work, you're in your work persona and you do things differently than your at-home version of you. That's part of why the pandemic was so traumatizing, is that you had to merge these two. In language-based reasoning tasks, LLMs were performing better when they were told that they were experts. Which brings us to the society of mind. A generative adversarial network is multiple models working together to check their work and improve the quality of that work. With large language models, multiple agents taking on multiple personas produce better material. When LLMs divide tasks, rather than being tasked with doing the whole thing by themselves, they do much better. But when you get them talking and testing each other's work and giving feedback, it's even better than self-reflection. This repository on GitHub demonstrates the society of mind concept by creating a software development company where you can give a single sentence prompt and it will create entire software applications in Python for you. The way this works is that the software prompts GPT-4 but tells it that it is a bunch of different AIs and given that context and a phase of software development, it and another AI, given a different prompt, have a conversation where they work out what to do. You can modify and add stages here. The repository contains dozens of example projects that the system has produced. Some are trivial examples, but some are quite complex. So let's address the elephant in the room. Remember when I said there were people who were watching very carefully who would start to sound the alarm once they thought that we might be oppressing something? So we're talking about it. TLDR, 
We think consciousness is tractable to be studied scientifically. It's just going to be hard. Some scientists from across the world have made a rubric. The rubric is going to be based off of observable evidence. Many of the indicator properties exist, but not in a complete system. I really mean all around the world. So what's the consciousness rubric? Input modules using algorithmic recurrence. You're able to reuse information you've learned. Input modules generating organized, integrated perceptual representations. You can point at a cat and you know it's a cat. We're already here. Multiple specialized systems operating in parallel. We're here. Limited capacity workspace and a selective attention mechanism. Done and dusted. Global broadcast. Check. State dependent attention. Using the workspace to query modules in succession to perform complex tasks. GPT can plan and use multiple tools in succession to accomplish different tasks. It's already integrated into ChatGPT. Generative top-down or noisy perception modules. OpenAI has recently introduced GPT-V, as in GPT that can see. Metacognitive monitoring, as evidenced in AutoGPT. Under development by the Gato framework, they're working on guiding alignment through heuristic imperatives, basically RLHFing values into AIs, which is what our parents do. This fourth condition is considered to just have been met because of neural networks. Attention schema theory gets at things like chain of thought, tree of thought, and algorithm of thought, and the concept of attention and transformer neural networks. It's kind of a complex concept that I've touched on in other videos. This next part just seems to say that because we met global workspace theory, we're basically done here. The next one applies to any AI system that is agential, as in it keeps prompting itself, and that it learns from feedback. This is some language model systems, also robots. The last part is embodiment, and that is working with current robots. So while no AI system meets all the criteria, AI systems all independently can meet these criteria. Basically, if you're conscious, then the pieces are there for consciousness in AI. We just haven't put them together yet.